So we are back here in the area that's heavily deforested. And I don't know if you can hear the toads calling, but it is toad season officially in the western woods. And right here, right here are some toads, a female to the right, a male to the left. You can see the coloration difference. Males generally have a yellow, uh, yellow sides and they're a little bit they're a little bit lighter shaded. Females are a lot more colorful usually. Um, they're usually a darker color brown. And there's a lot of diversity here. I'm actually stepping in a lot of areas where there's beetles. But there are a ton of little toads in here. Well, adult toads, but a lot of male toads. When we were getting up to this spot here, uh, one of the toads came up from behind me and Tyler pointed him out or else I might have actually stepped on him. So this area is not only prime real estate for spotted salamanders, spring peepers, wood frogs, and obviously the eastern newt. This is also prime real estate for the American toad. Two out of the three stars of Frog Week live here. This is a very, very beautiful place to find amphibians. It's unbelievable. This is the very first spot right from the road. And there are all of these toads in here. So it is just a truly, truly unique time right now to spot amphibians. This is one of the best spots that I have ever been to. I think it's a water beetle. But we're gonna advance a little. Now, there is an owl around. You might hear it time from time. So we are going to examine a lot more of the area. So there was one thing I'd been reading in a lot of uh, articles from very intelligent researchers. And the theory suggests that American toads, who you see right here, there's two in amplexus, you can't really see. There's a male right here, and there are a ton. I don't think you can see them over here. There are a ton of them around. The theory was that American toads do not breed where there's wood frogs or wood frog tadpoles. The reason why is because, as you know, the rana species, the pond frogs, are very carnivorous and they'll eat whatever they get the chance to. And that even starts when they're tadpoles. So the idea was that American toads realize this from being young and they tend to not breed where wood frogs once bred. So like a venera pool like this, where we definitely saw wood frogs, theory would state from that research that American toads would not breed here. So in Pennsylvania for frog week, the wood frog and the American toad breed in the same venero pool. This is a, actually a very important case to prove and we have it documented. So we are gonna continue to move forward with tonight, but I am loving seeing all of my favorite American toads out. This is awesome. Look at how, how many toads there are. Wow. All of these little black dots, those are toad tadpoles. Look at that. So what you're looking at here, as this American toad greets us, these are toad eggs, American toad eggs, right here. See how they're different from the frogs, the wood frogs, how they lay clumps? These are a spiral. And those two are gonna be responsible for releasing more. Here is another close up. These are American toad eggs. These must have been laid either today or yesterday. You can just see the spiral that we're talking about. All of these eggs that these females laid. And we actually have a much smaller and narrow area right here compared to the larger venero pool. And trust me, it's still active.
don't shine the light over here. I think that might be what it is. So, we have two pairs of American Toads that are about to be releasing eggs. And you can see the strings of the spirals, which are the American Toads eggs. They are covered. They actually ran through a few. The female's not producing yet, but we're in the middle of a Venero pool, which might be only about three inches deep. But that must be all it takes for American Toads. Looks like he's subduing her. He's starting to fertilize. You can see how he's kicking his back legs. This is the beginning of the process where the female is actually going to release eggs and he's going to he's going to fertilize them while they're coming out. He's going to release a foam-like substance and that's actually the sperm and it's going to fertilize the eggs and it's going to create this beautiful spiral effect. Where is he? There he is. You can't see him on camera. The month of May, we still hear spring yep. peepers and toads. There we go. So we have a treat for you. These are, the little dots are American toad tadpoles. So you can clearly see they're very small. These are wood frog tadpoles. These are found right next to the American toads. <clears throat> now a big problem for a lot of um, studying and research shows that pond frog tadpoles are very carnivorous. So a lot of those tadpoles in here that are of the wood frogs are going to try and consume the abundant American toad tadpoles. But the catch is the American toad lays much more eggs and has many more tadpoles to make up for the wood frogs and any other pond frog that's opportunistic and readily waiting to consume them. So for one, it's really cool to see wood frogs and American toad tadpoles in the same pond. Just wanted to make sure we documented this for you guys. This is now May, so we have confirmation that both the wood frogs and the American toad successfully bred in here. And it's just nice to see. Hopefully, a lot of these American toad tadpoles and a lot of these wood frog tadpoles will be able to survive and get the heck out of here. Um, they're going through a massive deforestation project here for timber. So um, they're going to need everybody that they can get, basically, to survive this. Um, it's not very likely. I don't know, to be honest with you, if it looks like there are trees around here. So this, this entire breeding ground, it could be taken down within a matter of, it could be tomorrow. It could be next month. It could be next year. So... These guys, even though they don't realize it, not just with predators, they're also at a race in time against people. It's a shame because look at how fragile this life is right here. Just these little tadpoles of two different species. Two species of amphibian that are usually abundant, but they don't have a voice to really tell us that this is their home. This is where they belong. So this is a really beautiful thing to see the wood frogs and the toads together that's also kind of a sad thing knowing that not only are some of these guys not going to make it from predators but now there's an added risk whenever you add in deforestation so we're going to take a look around and see what else we could find but hey look at all these beautiful lives honestly look at this i don't even think they're in a venero pool they're just in a small puddle here and the male has the female they might actually be, oh, nope. So where we just were, I think that the female is trying to take the male with her to the water. Because this is way too narrow, way too shallow for these toads. There's no way the tadpoles would survive. So where the toads are calling, where the other two pair of American toads were, it looks like that's where these two are headed. So we're going to let them be. I just wanted to get this guy on camera. We were just walking on this trail and this toad, he looked right at us and he greeted us with his call. So he officially made Frog Week for doing something so cool. 
So here is Mr. American Toad. Hopefully he'll get a female tonight. If not, uh, there's always a chance for tomorrow. Always see something. Oh, he sees a rival. Let's see if he's going to call for us. Oh, right on cue. And a spring peeper is coming up. Go ahead, Mr. Toad, get him. That must be his warning. We're going to leave Mr. Toad do his thing. Where is he? Look at that. Who says a frog can't be man's best friend? Oh, never mind. <laughs> they are the second frog to come out of hibernation in the western portion of Pennsylvania in the Appalachian Mountains. So a lot of people would actually think the spring peeper would be first just because they hear the loud call. But the wood frog has such a growl and a lower, like a duck noise, but you have to be kind of close to actually hear them calling. And they don't get the credit they deserve, but the wood frog is actually the first to emerge. And next is the infamous spring peeper. Well, I can say for starters, the spring peeper is a very cold tolerant amphibian. Once it's done here calling, you're not gonna see them the rest of the, in the entirety of the season. They're gonna go into hibernation completely unseen after the breeding season so it's actually a very cool sight to see them most people just hear them they don't actually see them so we're bringing to light one of the most infamous frogs probably something you think is an insect calling but no it's actually a frog and these do not make good pets even though they're abundant throughout basically from Canada to Florida the spring peeper is a cool tolerant frog, it's a small species, and there's not a lot of good information on it in captivity. The general lifespan, the general lifespan for the spring peeper is somewhere between one to four, maybe five years. That's only been documented in uh, different specimens in the wild. There's no telling what would happen in captivity, but there's a lot of reason to believe that some specimens will live longer than the average lifespan so it's not a true be-all end-all for these species that they have a short lifespan it also depends on predators it depends on their habitat if they're able to eat enough um, hibernation is a big part of it so there's a lot of different aspects that go into it but the spring peeper is one of my favorite frogs it's not a star of frog week but you're definitely going to hear it in almost every single episode because the spring peeper, it really brings to life what Frog Week is, because this is one of the most common calls. This is one of the most uh, abundant species. People think about this frog whenever they think of frogs. They say, is that that call that I heard when I was driving past Walmart? Or is that that call I heard on the golf course when I was driving past it? So this, this guy here, is a pretty good representative of what a lot of people think about when they think of frogs. Now, as I was telling you, one of the most common predators of the spring peeper is the American bullfrog. And you might be wondering how that's possible. Well, the American bullfrog wakes up early. It's one of the first to emerge, but they don't actually breed right when they emerge. They wake up to hunt. And the spring peeper and the wood frog are really tasty to the bullfrog. We actually got, not a close up, but we actually did see a bullfrog who was waiting to see if he could snag a spring peeper close by. I startled him a little bit so he didn't, but the spring peeper is one of the coolest frogs. They have one of the loudest calls, which I've been just continuously talking about. It's, it's truly one of the most recognizable parts of spring. So this guy, he took off, oh, there he is. So the spring peeper is one of the most important frogs. Even though it's abundant, it deserves to be respected and conserved. And it's truly one of the coolest things to come across in the spring. So with that being said, we're gonna probably put him in the Venero pool. I can't go too far because I don't have the right boots on for this. That is a bullfrog out there. And there's a spring peeper that was calling. I believe that he's been trying to catch the spring peeper to eat it. I mean, this is common. Bullfrogs are like the T-Rex of all the pond frogs. 
and all the frogs and toads in general. I mean, they'll consume anything that they get a chance to. They'll eat American toads if they if they feel the urge. They'll eat pickerel frogs. They'll eat supposedly newts. Uh, we found that out from Tyler. And these frogs will just try to consume anything they can fit into their mouths. They are truly one of the most opportunistic feeders. And they are not afraid to eat their own kind or any of their related cousins with spring peepers or American toads or whatnot. Now he was afraid of me from talking, so he went down. So we're going to keep moving forward. Right here you see a leopard slug. Actually, American toads and wood frogs, and any other frog for that matter, can't prey on this insect. What happens with the leopard slug is very unique. So, whenever the leopard slug feels threatened, it releases these secretions, and what happens is it's a slimy mucus, and it just tastes nasty and foul. And if the toad still refuses, or the wood frog refuses to spit up the leopard slug, it'll release enough of it, it's actually been known to kill amphibians if they consume it. So a lot of cases American toads and wood frogs will avoid these altogether. They'll show no interest. It's something that they probably picked up on whenever they tried to eat one when they were young. And their later experience and wisdom of dealing with this, they understand it's noxious, it's nasty, and they're staying away. So we're gonna let this leopard slug do his thing and we're gonna keep moving.